Hello, hello, hello everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful day, a wonderful night, and all the good things are happening in your life. I am Katie Brannon. This is Tea Time True Crime with Katie, and I have another true crime case for you. Warning, my podcast is not for children. I will talk about adult situations. Viewer discretion is advised. So this is your first time joining. Hi, what's going on? I'm Katie. I like to smile in the beginning because I begin to maybe be emotional, cry, definitely not smiley towards the end of the podcast. You know what I'm saying? That that's a given, right? So yeah, if you were listening, thank you so much for listening. And if you were watching, thank you so much for watching. Please hit that like, subscribe and share button and let's get to it. I'm going to be talking about Christian Fernandez. Christian Fernandez was the youngest ever for like charged with first degree murder in Jacksonville, Florida. He was born January 14th, 1999, which makes him a Capricorn. Mm -hmm. He was the goat, but not the kind of goat that you were thinking. Now I found this quotation about this whole Christian Fernando, Fernandez case, excuse me. No one to protect the mom when she needed it as a kid. Then she in turn didn't protect her children. Yeah, shout out to you who left that comment or whatever because that, that hits pretty hard. So just let you know guys, when I say viewer discretion is advised, Please do not comment that this is not YouTube safe or anything like that. You have a choice to just, you know, zoom out, clock out. You know what I'm saying? Not clock out, but you know what I mean. So this case is like, I I picked out this case because it's such a controversial case. I want to know down in the comments below what you guys think about this case. All in all, this is tragic. I feel like this could have been preventable. No, it definitely could have been preventable. So Christian Fernandez is a kid, literally. So his mother was actually an only 12 years old when she gave birth to Christian. I know, 12 years. Yeah, and Christian's father was 20 years old. Yeah. That is what? Yeah, it's horrible. Absolutely horrible. He didn't receive any time for like messing with a minor, but he was criminally charged. But to avoid incarceration, he promised the courts that he would take care of his son. Oh, really? Oh, that's so sweet. That's so, that's so nice. You know, let's not forget the fact that you had sex with a 12 year old, which 12 year olds, I don't know if you know, guys, is extremely young to be having sex. In fact, when you're 12 years old, you shouldn't even know what sex is, honest. But that's beside the point. The judge actually gave him 10 years probation, but now he is a registered sex offender. All right, well, we got that, uh, the court system. All right. Well, for a while, he was actually taking care of Christian and the mom. Vianella Susanna is Christian's mother. Now, like I said, for a while, he was taking care of his son, um, you know, the registered sex offender. But then he just started only visiting like once a week if that evidently turned into a deadbeat dad. Now, his mother couldn't even take care of him because she was only 12 years old, okay? So the caretaker that for both of them, the mom, 12, and the baby was a 34-year-old grandmother who was a drug addict. Yeah, this is not a good premise for what's happening right now. This is just not a good time. 
there's already like trauma just when this kid was like born okay so age two years old Christian and his 14 year old mother were actually removed from the home of the grandma and put into foster care because Christian was actually found dirty naked roaming the streets by himself while his grandmother was getting high in a hotel. When Christian was seven years old, his mom fell in love with Luis Galarago Blanca after dating him for a while. Now, after dating him for a while, things happen. You know, you start to kind of want to be with each other. You may want to get married. Well, they did. They got married and they started their own family. Mm hmm. So Christian, he like accumulated <laughs> um, three more siblings. So you have four children in the home. Now, Christian's mom was only in her 20s when she had three more children. And Louise, Louise, Louise was not, how, how should I say this? Reports saying that he was not an easygoing father. He was not an easygoing stepfather. In fact, he had a big temper. Yeah, he had a big temper and he would take out his anger on the children. Yeah, it's really sad. Like I said, guys, it's just going to get sadder. And you're wondering, okay, well, what did this Christian kid do? Is it him that ended up to be the young? Yes, yes. And But I'm trying to paint a picture of where this kid came from. Other people go right to the crime and grill it, but I want to give you the whole shebang. Like, not saying there is a reason to do this. There's not. But to have some kind of logical explanation or something like that I mean it's yeah okay so sorry I go on tangents sometimes so Christian's mom is in her 20s and three more kids you have four kids in the house so he's like abusing the children okay he's abusing them with um, mental abuse he's abusing them with physical and Christian just wants to stop with the abuse but he starts doing adult chores. This is a kid, okay? And he's cooking and cleaning and taking care of the house. Well, the home, they lived in an apartment, but okay. In 2007 though, eight years old, okay? There was a report that Christian was actually molested by his older cousins. So this kid is just, like I said, he is just born out of trauma and trauma and it's just going to keep on hitting. It really is. It's rough. Like, I, I don't even know what to say. I'm just going to say what I've researched and then I want to know what you guys think. Reports also say that Christian was killing kittens, sexually stimulating his classmates, and masturbation at school in the restroom. I'm sorry, you're eight years old. You're, you're eight. Like, you're playing with dirt, I feel like, at eight years old. You're reading a book. You're not playing with your ding. I don't, I don't know, I'm not a guy. I don't know. Sorry, it's tea time. I'm drinking tea out of my Nightmare on Elm Street cup. Okay. October 22nd. 2010 11 year old Christian he's 11 years old now he shows up at school with like a major injury to his face his eye is black and it's swollen now immediately the teacher is like go to the nurse and she actually notifies police officers and they're wondering what happened, who did this to you, you know, interrogating the child. And he said, my stepfather did it. Now, the police were trying to contact Louise. 
and Christian was basically saying, my stepdad was upset and he punched me in the eye. Like that morning. So they immediately, how bad this bruised eye, this swollen eye, it was so bad that Christian got immediate medical attention because they thought something happened to the retina in his eye. That's a hell of a punch to a kid. <clears throat> Excuse me. So Louise is supposed to come to the police department to answer some questions about the incident. And they're calling his phone and they're trying to contact him. Okay. So they go to the door and they're knock, knock, knocking, knocking on the apartment door. And they are stunned to have this frightened little girl open the door. She sees the police officers. She is scared and she runs to the rear bedroom of the apartment. But as she's running, there is blood in her footsteps. Immediately, the police officers are met with a horrible, gruesome scene. So when they arrived, they automatically saw blood. It was a bloody mess. And what they saw was Louise dead with a gunshot wound to his head. Self-inflicted. Yep. Louise the bastard, he didn't want to face prosecution because not only not only the abuse to his stepchild, but also there was alleged sexual abuse as well. And you're probably thinking, well, well, Katie, where, where were the children? When Louise took his own life, they were there. They were there. They witnessed their stepfather take his own life. The little girl was frightened. She had blood on her. And little David was only one and a half years old, roaming around with blood spatter on his body. So this horrific act was done in front of the children. After that happened, I mean, I, I can't imagine. I can't imagine the trauma, the horror the kids must be asking like so many questions. I'm, I just, it's rough. Like I, I can't imagine. It's horrible. After that incident, Christian's mom left with the kids to Carrington Place Apartments on Alden Road in Jacksonville, Florida. He went to Kernan Middle School and was where he was thriving. Okay, Christian was making A's. Good for you, dude. But a few months later, his grades were slipping. Yeah, I, I said it's bad. I said, it's just gonna get worse. So please, if you don't have, I forgot to say, sorry, if you're just joining, hello. Um, I always tell you guys to grab your popcorn or grab a comfort item that makes you happy because my stories are extremely disturbing. Just want to let you know. These are real people. This really happened. This is not just a story. These are people's lives. You got to remember that. March 14, 2011. 12-year-old Christian he was left home alone to watch his two-year-old brother, David, while his mother went to the bank. Now, I watched the interrogation video, and it's like about 90 minutes long, and it's on YouTube. And Christian, you know, said to the detective that, yes, my mom left me alone to watch my brother, and I'm sure the other children, too, they didn't say that, but I'm, I'm not sure at that point. But he was there to watch his brother. 
and Christian was upset because he didn't want to watch his brother, you know, but the mom, apparently she didn't do it all the time and she had to go to the bank, which again, I don't understand why she didn't take her kids to go to the bank, you know? I mean, maybe she needed time alone. I don't have children, but I hear it's extremely stressful and you want to have your time. Well, if you want to have your time, go to a neighbor, call a friend, have them watch the kids or bring the kids with you. They're your children. <clears throat> so before March 14, 2011, a couple months before that, Christian broke his little brother's legs. Yeah. Now, because of wrestling. Yeah, it's horrible. I apologize to say legs. It was leg. But the way the, the kid was in a position, I mean, if I had a doll, I'd show you, but I'm going to have a picture right here on the screen to, to show you what position the boy was in but if you are listening it's basically like you're sitting up and your two legs are being bent backwards and Christian grabbed his brother's leg and bent it until he heard a pop and David was crying and screaming because uh, it hurts yeah I know when I heard about that position I'm like did he not just just break the leg he could have broke the spine you can break someone's spine that way so while Christian's mom was gone you know he was Christian was kind of upset he didn't want to watch his brother so that was before a couple months before he broke his brother's leg okay now this is March 14 2011 we're back there so Christian's home alone again with his brother which makes no damn sense because a couple months before he broke his brother's leg because of wrestling. So again, there's a, there's a lot wrong here. Not only you didn't bring your kids, you're also letting your kid with your other kid who broke the kid's bone. Yeah. So just no bueno guys. No bueno. So Christian was very annoyed with David and he lashed out about he said he was angry about what his stepfather done so i mean god knows what his stepfather really done i mean we only saw like the the black eye where he could have i feel like he could have like decimated his little head like it's horrible horrible so what christian did was got he got david his two-year-old brother and smashed him in the bookcase not once, but more than once. They say either twice or three times. Um, the third, the second or third time, David did not get back up. And he was bleeding from the nose. So, automatically, Christian, like, snaps out of it. And he's 12 years old. He snaps out of it and he was like, oh my god, David's... This is not good. David is not saying anything like he's not crying anymore. He's like passed out. He's like knocked out. So what he does was he, he puts David back in his bed. Like it's bedtime. And when Christian's mom came back, Bianella, you know, Christian's mom, you would think that if your kid is hurt, you would be like, like with my cats, anything that's wrong or they do something that is like out of the ordinary, vet. I take them to the vet. I, you know, like, bam, I don't even mess around with it. They're my kids. My kitty cats are my kids. That's how I feel. I'm a fur baby mama, okay? So, unless the universe wants something different for me. But right now, kitty cat mama, okay? So what she doesn't do, she does not, does not do like anything at first. So Christian is going to his mom and saying what happened. You know, probably he hurt his head or, 
you know, he's not doing, you know, not doing good. And the mom, she just thought it was no big deal. She said, just change the baby's clothes, wipe his nose, and put ice on his head. Put him in the bed. Which he was already in bed. So she goes and goes on the computer. Goes on the internet, has a joy old time. Mm -hmm. It takes her several hours to take her son to medical care. I'm, I'm sorry, what? Several hours. Yes, yeah, she didn't think it was a, a big deal. She was downloading music, watching music videos, reading articles and stories. And then finally, hours later, she Googled terms like um, in a coma or hit head or or something like that, something that pertained to the injury of her son. Yeah. Four hours later. Yes, I said that correctly. Four hours later, she finally drove her son to the hospital. But David, little baby David, two-year-old innocent David died. He died two days later. The cause of death was blunt force trauma and there was bleeding in the brain. The doctor said his life could have been saved if he received medical care, emergency medical care, which means when she got home and her son was like, hey mom, David's not like, something's wrong with David. Like, uh, 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 you know, he's 12. He doesn't even like comprehend what's going on. And she's just like, eh, he's fine. He's gonna be all right. I I'm sorry, but if your son is not responsive at all, you take him to the emergency room. You take him. But um, rest in peace, David. Rest in peace. February 8, 2013. Christian, he would be charged as an adult. And as I said before, by 2013, he was the youngest, youngest ever to be charged as an adult. Now, the defense wanted him to plead guilty, so he received seven years for manslaughter and aggravated batter in the death of a baby. Baby David. Now, you're wondering, well, what about the mother? She, she's to blame. She has blame, too. You know what? In this situation, I feel like she does. I do. But she was 12 years old when she gave birth. Like, they didn't say it was the R word or S-A word. But my God, he's 20 years old and you're 12. Grooming, is that what we call it, guys? Grooming? But it's not really grooming because he had sex with her and she had a child. So the mother, she was 27 years old this time. April 1st, I know, April Fool's Day. April 1st, 2011, she was charged with aggravated manslaughter of a child under 18 by culpable negligence. After spending two years and a few months awaiting trial, the judge decided to do 90 days of domestic violence shelter two years in a halfway house and to work on mental health and life skill help. Yeah. In 2018, Christian was actually released but was added eight years of probation. Now, forensics, psychologists, they said that Christian was emotionally undeveloped because of the abuse that he endured. 
and he had PTSD from extreme sexual abuse and just abuse. This kid was just, he only knew abuse. Like right after he popped out of the womb. You know what I'm saying? Like just horrible, horrible case. But the psychologist, forensic psychologist, which I know is random, but they also said that he can be reformed. He is one of those cases that can be reformed. In January 2023, which, you know, it's October 2023, so he has been free since January 2023. What do you guys think? Do you think trauma, extreme trauma, is an excuse for taking a life? Or... Do you think he should be in a mental facility for the rest of his life? Or do you think he should have gotten any jail time at all? I'm very curious to know what you guys think. It is a horrible, horrible case. I mean, I haven't read about kid trauma that bad until, I mean, since the, you know, Sanford from the chicken coop murders. Remember that one? Oh, that was brutal. If you guys want to check that out, I'll put it in the description below if you like, but that is very, I go in depth with that and it's really, really hard to hear. But Sanford did survive, so that's good. Christian, they say, do, does have remorse and the judge says that he is not allowed to talk to his siblings unless the siblings contact him first. Yeah, it's one of those cases that it, it's so much involved. It's not just a cut and dry kind of case. But again, I want to know what you guys think. Just drinking some tea. Awesome, awesome. I don't know how to like end this. This is just like brutal. But um, thank you so much for hanging out with me. And... If you guys have any case su suggestions, I will leave the um, the the email. <laughs> Sorry, I'm it's like awkward time right now, so I'm like smiling and I'm like, oh god, I just talked about something horrific. I always do, right? In this podcast, it's never a good time. But my true crime kitty cats, I really appreciate you hanging out. Please know that you're loved and cherished. My email is tea time cb at yahoo.com if you have any case suggestions all right until next time you are doing better than you think bye no i don't know i'm asking like exactly what you did tell me again what you did